just really quick before I start, shout out to Catherine, because she learned that song in one day. One day. I literally told her yesterday that I learned that song. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly Silva. I am 16 and a homeschooled sophomore. This morning we are talking about anchoring ourselves to God. Hebrews 6.19 says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. This is basically saying hope anchors us to God. It can be hard to give our lives to God. And just to get a show of hands, uh, how many of you have ever questioned the strength of your anchor? Just, okay, because I know I have. Uh, I would like to say my life story is simple and 100% perfect, but that would just be a slight exaggeration. Uh, I found it hard and stressful to find a life story that would be appropriate to tie in with the verse, so I prayed and talked to some people and decided it really doesn't matter what people think of you. What matters is that you're speaking from the heart for God. So I'm sharing about how I ended up where I am today, starting from about three years ago. When I was 13, I made a friendship with someone I was very close to, and to protect identity, I'm going to call him Bill. Bill and I became great friends. I loved hanging out with him, talking to him, praying with him. And one day, between my 7th and 8th grade year, Bill started taking advantage of the relationship that we had formed. He was three years older than I was, and we were both young and stupid. One month later, I started the 8th grade. There were many family issues going on as well, and it all started piling up on me. I was blaming God for everything that was happening and wondering why he wasn't helping me out. I ended up in a hole at least 20 times bigger than I was, and I wouldn't go ask someone for help. One day in September, I ended up in a horrible situation that I didn't know how to get myself out of. I went to a football game and left in tears. I made it through the eighth grade, but my hole got deeper and deeper through the summer. I went on vacation to visit my family in Massachusetts, and while I was there, I was very unstable and unhappy. I ended up with a foot injury and on crutches while I was there, which is really hard when you have to go hiking through the White Mountains in New Hampshire. Trust me, it's not easy. When I, um, I healed, and when I got home, everything went downhill. When I arrived, my grandmother was in the process of moving to a smaller place to live. My sister and I went to help her move, and while in the process of moving, I ended up in the hospital. I sometimes let this slip when I'm in conversations, and the next question I get is, oh, why were you there? I was always ashamed to say that I was in the inpatient psych unit at Carillion, so I just told them that I was sick. I never told anyone that I was there. Now I realize it's nothing to be ashamed of. I was getting help for the traumatic event that I'd suffered that past September. I was in the hospital for nine days, and when I got out, I went to see my grandmother's new house. I was bummed that I, was, that I missed the move, but glad that I was healing. The next big thing was starting high school. I started high school only two days after I got out of the hospital. I missed orientation and meeting my teachers, so the day before school, I went to meet my guidance counselor and my teachers and learn my way around the school. Of course, it was a super hard transition for me. Not even a month after starting school, I fell in dance and ended up with a horrible sprain in my left ankle. This left me out of dance on crutches and in a cast. I not only lost one of the most important things to me, but I ended up falling into another rut thinking I would never get a break. I could not have been more right. I was failing classes, getting bullied, getting myself in trouble, and having a very hard time making friends. That November, my grandfather passed away. He had dementia and was in a nursing home for quite a while. I loved him more than anything, and it hit me hard. On top of all of this, I was still in school. In January, I made a huge mistake and got myself pulled out of school. It was the worst decision I'd probably ever made, but homeschooling is the best thing that's ever happened to me. After this big transition in my life, I was in heavy counseling and still healing from my injury, but passing my classes and happier than I'd probably ever been. I started thanking God for everything he had done in my life. I may, not have, I may have had some missiles thrown my way, but I managed to make it through. I would definitely not be afraid or ashamed to say that I'd lost my anchor and my faith in God, but with help from my family and friends, I regained my confidence and my faith, and it is stronger now than it has ever been. I will admit that I found it hard to tie in the verse with my sermon, because because this verse talks a lot about hope. I needed hope to get through my hard time, and I thought I didn't have any, but turns out getting through hard times is easier with hope and believing in Jesus.
as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever. Hebrews 6, 19-20 As I talk about hope and anchors, anchors have been around since the beginning of nautical travel. An anchor holds a ship in place in the midst of the most treacherous seas. This has always been a safeguard for vessels, keeping them from being thrown to shore in the middle of a storm. As believers, we also have an anchor that is steadfast and secure. It is hope. This hope is placed upon Jesus Christ himself but sometimes the term hope becomes confusing. What is hope? It is a wishy-washy, maybe, or kind of unsure optimism. The modern idea of hope is to wish for, to expect, but without certainty of the fulfillment, to desire very much, but with no real assurance for getting your desire. The certainty of not having familiar for fulfillment gets really scary. But just like anchors, we know they are there, but do we really trust them? Do we really trust they will keep us anchored at sea and not from moving? Just like uncertainty to be anchored to God, but we aren't sure if He will always be there. So I say, the hope is sometimes uncertain in anchors we have in Him, and sometimes tested. We don't always want to hold on to the anchor of God. Sometimes we are tested with wind and storms that sometimes move our anchors and give us <laughs> and give us an excuse to pull our anchors up and not hold on to them. But when wind comes, God wants us and knows we can fight the wind and hold on to his power and to continue to anchor to him. I talk about being tested because I was tested by wind this week when my Grammy fell and broke her hip. She had a partial hip replacement, immediate surgery, and now is on a long road to recovery. My anchor was tested from this because I wanted to pull it up with confusion and anger to why this would happen. My Grammy with so much heart and soul. She's a very strong woman, and I know God gives the hardest battles to his strongest soldiers. She is one heck of a fighter. When she opened her eyes and she looked at me, I saw that anchor that was in her. She was not going to let the wind move her. But then I stopped and I looked around at the hospital and I saw the hope that was in every single human being I saw. The ones being discharged with their families, the ones happy to be moving around, the ones smiling and laughing. I saw, even in the uncertainty of them, they all had hope. I saw an anchor of God working through inside each and every one of them, even if they did not know the anchor was there. It will forever be there in whatever any of them or any of you face. Hebrews 6, 13 through 18 is that God has gone the extra mile in seeing to that we have strong encouragement to hold fast to our hope in him. He wants us to have encouragement and the encouragement he wants us to have and the assurance that all his promises will come true for us. 
and that our future is firmly in his hands for our good. good. Although we will be tested and blown around in the wind, I assure you I found my anchor in God, and his anchor is inside each and every one of you. In the end of the storm, we will be okay. In the midst, we may, may not be, but God is with us through it all. that already. Um, so the verse we're going to be talking about today, just the first part of it is what I'm going to focus on, and it says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. So we're talking about hope, right? So we should probably define hope, and Meredith alluded to this a little bit. Uh, when we use the word hope in daily conversation, we usually aren't referring to biblical hope. When we say, like, I hope my exams will get canceled, or I hope I'll win the lottery. See, we know those things aren't really going to happen, but we wish that they would happen. This isn't biblical hope. A better definition and a more biblical definition of hope is a feeling of trust. So then, what is trust? The best way to define trust is the belief in the power or strength of something, even if we can't see it. So, like a trust fall that you do with your friends when you fall backwards and they have to catch you. It's kind of like that. You have to trust that they're going to catch you, even though you can't really see what they're doing. The best way to explain this is through something I do in my own life, and it's called forensics. Now, I know what you're thinking, like CSI, police, dead body kind of stuff, and that's not the kind of forensics that I do. Trust me, I'm not that cool. Uh, the forensics I actually do is uh, more commonly known as speech and debate. So in forensics or speech and debate, there's all these different categories. You have categories that are more speech categories, where you give a speech about a current event or an issue that you support or don't support. And then there are things that are more like acting, which is what I do. I do the acting side of forensics, where you basically take a 10 minute play and you play all the characters by yourself. So you pop in and out of characters using accents and hand motions, you know, where your hands are, you'll pop in and out of characters to uh, convey the character that you are playing. So this past year, this past season in forensics, because this is a school-sponsored activity, technically a sport, even though we don't run. Um, <laughs> in this, this past season, I did an event called Duo Interpretation. And this is the only event in forensics where you have two people instead of just one, excluding debate, of course. Um, so I had two people, me and my duo partner, and we were, uh, we were tasked with conveying this 10 minute piece. So there's a lot of rules in forensics, a lot of things you have to be aware of that you're getting judged on, because this is a uh, activity that gets judged on uh, by a judge in a room. So here are some of the rules that we have to follow. So we can't make eye contact, we can't touch, the piece has to be under 10 minutes, it has to be a published work, you have to portray different characters clearly, and then see, speak at a good pace and many other things you will be judged on. <laughs> Sounds like a lot, isn't it? Um, so with all those things in mind, when I think about forensics, I realize that it's a lot like life, and I'll explain. So we can't see God, at least not physically. We can see him through our friends and our family and people on the streets who are kind to us. But we can't see him physically. So this is just like my forensics piece. My duo partner is standing beside me, and I'm not allowed to look at him. We have to look straight ahead as if we are talking to each other, so as if he was right in front of me, but in reality, he's beside me so that the audience is able to see. So let's say I was to lose trust in my duo partner. I can't see what he's doing, and I try to take things into my own hand. Well, the piece would immediately fall apart. The same is true with God. We can't try to take things into our own hands. So if I were to get nervous and worry about him coming in on the wrong cue or getting the lines wrong, the piece would immediately fall apart. So we have to trust God that he's going to come in on the right cues in our lives and have the right lines as well. So we have faith in God, but what about faith in ourselves? This is not something I see talked a lot about, so I wanted to talk about it today. Have you ever seen The Prince of Egypt? It is one of my favorite movies ever, and I know it's an animated movie that's kind of geared towards children, but anybody can enjoy it because it has a really good soundtrack, and the story is really true to the Bible, which isn't um, always what Hollywood does with biblical movies, but this one's pretty good. So it has a really good soundtrack, like I said, and one of the songs is called Through Heaven's Eyes. 
And this is meant to encourage Moses when he's feeling down. He doesn't feel like he can fulfill God's plans for him. And one of the lyrics says, A single thread in a tapestry, though its color brightly shines, can never see its purpose in the pattern of the grand design. And then another lyric says, So how can you see what your life is worth or where your value lies? You can never see through the eyes of man. You must look at your life through heaven's eyes. And this really spoke to me when I was planning the sermon. Because we can't really see the plans that God has in store for us. And a lot of the times we lose trust in ourselves that we're worthy of those plans. But if we have faith that God created us for a purpose and he has a specific plan in mind, then we'll be able to fulfill the plans he has for us. So as I close this sermon, I challenge you to follow where God is leading you in life with complete trust, like an anchor, and I challenge you to trust in yourself enough to succeed. Let us pray. God, we trust you with all our hearts. We have hope for the future and the plans you have made for us. Please allow us to see you working in our lives. Amen. Thank you.